What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be going over everything you need to know about diagnosing a misfire on my 2015 Yamaha FJ09. But this should apply to FZ09, MT09, and XSR bikes all alike because they all share the same Yamaha CP3 engine with the same ignition system. So let's get right into it. The first thing you want to check is the fuses. Now this is a really simple and easy thing to do. The fuses on the FJ can be found under the seat and under the right side plastic like this one, but on the other side. Use your multimeter in continuity mode to go over the silver heads on the left and right of each fuse and make sure you have a connection across those two points to identify whether you have a blown or good fuse. Any blown fuses should be replaced because that's basically going to give you a no start situation or no power to some circuit on your bike. A fuse will likely give you a no start, not a misfire, so that one's probably not your problem. The next thing to check though that possibly causes your misfire is your battery. Your battery on this bike is found under the seat. And the manual recommends that you should have at least 12.7 volts on your battery when it is disconnected from the bike. But the general rule of thumb is that 12.6 is fine. If you have something like 12.2, 12.3, that's bad. The battery's dying or on its way out. I'd highly recommend you replace that battery with a new one so that you have a fresh battery with the full electrical potential to power your bike and give it as much spark and electrical power as it can. A dying and dead battery can cause mysterious problems. So if you've got a low reading battery, replace it. The next thing to check is spark plugs. I've done a whole video on servicing spark plugs on this bike and I'll link it down in the description down below, but you can also look for the thumbnail just like this. When you get to the spark plugs, the spec for the gap on the electrode of the spark plug should be between 0.031 to 0.035 thousandths of an inch, basically 31 to 35 thousandths of an inch. Of course, on the spark plug, you wanna look for wetness, corrosion, or a bent mangled electrode. Hopefully you don't have that last one. They should be lightly browned and clean. Tiny amount of carbon sitting on them is fine. Also inspect the porcelain around the spark plug and make sure it's not cracked or missing. Also spark plugs should be replaced every 13,000 kilometers or 8,000 miles. So if you don't know when they were last changed, best to just change them. The next thing to check is the ignition coils. And if you're going all the way in there for spark plugs, you might as well check the ignition coils. Now you can check the coils in two ways. The coils can be checked on the primary side and the secondary. To check the primary, you go to the top of the coil where the two pins are. You put your multimeter to a low resistance setting and put your multimeter across those two pins. Those two pins should measure 1.19 to 1.61 ohms. So it's basically under two ohms between one and two is what you should read. The second test you can do for your ignition coils is checking the secondary side of the coil. To do that, you take your multimeter and set it to something over about 15,000 ohms of resistance because you're looking for a spec that's 9.35 kilo ohms to 12.65 kilo ohms, basically around 9,000 to 12 and a half thousand ohms of resistance. So set your multimeter accordingly. Take one multimeter lead and touch it to a single lead on the top of the coil and take the other one and shove it in the bottom where the spark plug usually goes. Now the bottom one can be hard to locate and get a good contact on, but finesse it and you'll find a spot. If all that checks out, the next thing to check is your crankshaft position sensor. And I've also done a video on this. I'll link it down in the description, but the thumbnail looks like this. The crankshaft position sensor wire harness coupler can be found between the battery and the ABS module. It's a two wire connector. It's a black and gray wire that feed into the connection point. It's pretty hard to get it out there, but once you pull it out, you wanna look for a spec that's between 228 and 342 ohms. Now this should be measured at room temperature around 20 degrees Celsius because temperature can affect the resistance you measure. Don't measure it when the bike's hot, basically. A bad crankshaft position sensor will also usually throw code 12 on this bike. So keep an eye out for that. And if you do have code 12, it's likely your crankshaft position sensor. The next thing to check is switches, but switches usually cause a no start situation, but it has been documented that the right side handlebar grip uh, control module where your on off switch is does sometimes get faulty on older bikes. Like the FZ6 suffered from this problem when it got high vibrations at the handlebar. Sometimes the contacts inside the switch on the handlebar would loosen or would lose contact intermittently and cause what sounded like a misfire, but was actually just the bike losing power. Or maybe just open up the clamshell on the handlebar to make sure there's no corrosion in there and that the springs and mechanisms are sliding and making good contact. The other switches you can check is the gear position switch, side stand, the relay unit, and the lean angle sensor. All of these sensors and switches are designed to basically turn off the bike in the event of a crash. Most of the time, this causes a no start situation. So if you're having a misfire, you can likely skip this step. The last thing to check, whether it's no start or misfire, is your wiring continuity. Basically, if everything else checks out, your coils are good, your spark plugs are good, your crank position sensor is good, you need to go over everything with a multimeter and check end to end of each wire to ensure that it's connected and a stable wire. What can happen is you get corrosion or a short to ground where a wire rubs against a frame and has an intermittent connection. To check this, 
get your each end of your multimeter connected in continuity mode to each end of the wire, and then have someone else move the wire around and back and forth and make sure the resistance stays stable. If you see an open loop happen on your multimeter, you've got a short to ground or a disconnecting wire happening somewhere. And last resort is replacing the ECU. If everything else checks out, you've done everything, and you've likely replaced components at this part, coils, spark plugs, other things like that to try and solve your problem, the last thing to change is the ECU. And that sits under the gas tank on top of the air box, and it's very unlikely that you have to replace that because it's very uncommon that they fail, but who knows? Maybe the previous owner left the bike sitting outside in a lot of moisture and it seeped in and corroded the board. That is everything on how to diagnose a misfire straight from the Yamaha service manual for the Yamaha CP3 engine in the FJ09, FZ09, MT09, XSR, all those bikes. And I hope this helped you solve your misfire or at least get you started in the right direction on how to solve your misfire. If this video helped you out, drop a comment down below, smash the like and subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching and have a good day.